Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. In today's video we are going to check the latest 3D Studio Max update and especially the Tune Shader, which Autodesk and Intel work closely to improve the performance up to four times faster. We are going to check how this shader can be used for game development and especially creating stylized textures and as well we are going to talk about a topic which became very popular recently. To find out what is going to be the special topic which is very popular at the moment, just keep watching the video and now let's start! When I'm starting a scene I usually start with a block out. In this case I decided instead of doing this inside 3ds Max, this is usually 90% of the scenes I'm starting the block out in 3ds Max, but because I didn't really know what I want exactly from the scene and as well there were mostly more organic assets I decided to do the block out inside ZBrush and export everything once I'm happy with the result. Once this was done I just exported the assets, got them inside 3ds Max and the first thing which I did was to optimize them. So I used the new retopology tool and got them to the amount of triangles which I was going to be happy in the scene. And after that, I just created a UV set using the unwrap UVW. This was quite fast unwrap because I didn't want to go into too much detail. So I just used the point to point tool to create a seam. And after that, I used the quick peel function and the auto repack so that I have everything inside one UV island. Once this was done, it was time for me to start setting up the tune shader. So regarding the setup that I have finally in the scene is uh, very simple. So you can see that uh, I imported all the assets and as well, I added a few more vines here inside 3ds Max by using splines. And those are just a few light sources with few of them being warm color and the other two cold color so that I have some contrast in the scene. And finally, one camera setup, which is just by default. And I just made it with a square ratio because we want to, at the end, render this and have it as a turntable. For the tune shader, uh, you can see that I created a couple of different variations. These are for all the different materials. But we are going to go through one of them. And I'm also going to run you a little bit through the options that we have. So uh, let's have a look on the one which is for our rock. And uh, here you can see that uh, it's uh, quite simple and uh, I don't have uh, many maps which I'm using. By the way, if you want to add the tune shader, in order not to search it on the site, you can just use the search menu and type tune. And here you see this tune map on Arnold. So this is the one that you just drag and drop and you will have this huge shader, which uh, you can change quite a lot of the options. So uh, let's go back to it. Uh, what we have here, we have edges, so we can control the edge. Then we have the edge detection. This is something which we can set up how exactly it's going to detect our edges. And it's something which, if you remember from the picture which I showed you, it's those outlines that we have on our asset. Then if I scroll a little bit down, you will see that we have advanced edge control. So here we can use some uh, different IDs and uh, also we can have a priority, but uh, have in mind, uh, this is by the way written everywhere. This is something which is optimized and it works for the CPU. For the, the GPU, the tool shader is still not supported. But I can say that Intel did an awesome job optimizing it, so now it works very fast. Then we have our silhouette. So in our silhouette, again, we can control it and have the silhouette of the object to whatever color we want. And here we have our base. So this is the base color of your object. Then you can control the popularity. Uh, you can control as well the highlights and uh, stylize them in the way that you would like. And you can even add some rim light to your asset. This is great. In my scene, I didn't really have to use it because I personally prefer to set up the lights and exactly where the light sources and everything are coming with uh, the parameters on my own rather than using something like that. But it could be that uh, it's something which can be useful for your scene. For some of those, you can see that we can just set up uh, different parameters, but we can as well add different textures. And I'll show you one example, which I use very often with the tool shader. And I'll just go up to our grass. So here you can see that first I added one ramp RBG. I added this to our base tone map. The ramp RGB is something which we can control exactly what kind of colors we would like on our asset. In my case, you can see that I have very dark, like almost black, 
and then I have something which is mid green and lighter green and this gives me the effect I will show you now this gives me this nice effect for the grass but it also kills all the mid tones so we don't have any smooth going of the grass or anything like that but instead it gives this a little bit more cartoony feel to it this is something that you can control and by moving those sliders uh, left and right you can say exactly how much you want from each of those gradients and how much you want to control it and exactly uh, where it can end. Remember that this is something that as well depends on your light sources so the closer something is to your light source it's going to be the brighter color and then uh, on your shadows you're going to have the darker color so the, the way that you set up your lights in the scene also matters a lot and uh, this thing as well you can find it over here so if we just around and then you can see around RGB and then we can drag this node and connect it to any of our tone maps to control it. Another cool thing which I wanted to show you is you can see that there is a little bit more noise into the grass and this is because of an additional texture which I added. So uh, you can see here that there is mask color and inside the mask color I will show you how this image looks like. So I used this mask which is just some dirt mask and I used it into the mask color so this is going to give you an additional texture and you can also specify those edges and use them for this additional texture in order to enhance your look and add more details even if you want you can add some patterns for example some pencil pattern or something like that into your textures and then uh, you can control to have on top some edges and other things. One of the one of the awesome things about the Toon Shader is that it's something that can be combined with other 3D Studio Max tools, like for example Bake to Texture. As you remember, I did a very quick peel on our UVs for our rocks, and this gives me the opportunity to click zero and then Bake to Texture. After that, I'm going to create one beauty texture, which is going to be the final render, and this means that we are going to bake absolutely everything in this information in terms of lights and as well the shader functionality which we have already set it up so i'm just going to click on beauty we need to have our asset selected and add map to the selected object from here we're not going to use projection because we don't need to project from anything it's just something which we are going to bake onto our asset then which channel we're going to use we made our uvs into channel one i'm going to leave it on 2k and as well i'm going to leave it as a png once we are done with our setup i just need to click bake This technique for combining the Toon Shader together with the bake functionality inside 3D Max is awesome because you can create stylized textures for your game and they are going to be very optimized because you don't need to create any kind of complex shaders inside the game engine. So this means that you can create your assets, bake everything, bake all the lights, bake all the additional tune and cartoony textures onto the first diffuse channel of your textures and then just hook everything in the material inside the game engine and you're going to have an awesome looking environment which looks exactly the same as inside your 3ds max viewport. The second topic which you can use this and it's something which I told you in the beginning of the video that it's our secret topic is about NFTs. This year NFTs have become quite popular and it's something which I see a lot on the market. And a lot of the assets and a lot of the things which I see there are either stylized or in some way they use some a little bit more complex shaders either with some outline or anything like that. So you can use the Toon Shader for texturing your assets and once you have a scene like this only thing that you need to do is you can go and create one circle make it around the assets that we want to make at 360 and then lift it to the height that we would like to be and from there on we can just select our camera go to motion and there into motion position conversion tool and here we can put a start and an end time so i have my timeline at 100 frames so i'm just going to leave it like this and the number of samples this is how many keyframes it's going to create inside this timeline so in my case i want it to be a little bit smoother so i'll make it 20 and then we are just going to click convert from and i'm going to select our circle that we just created you can see that it automatically creates this 360 turntable 
and we can use it to render our 360 and after that this render we can create a GIF file and put it on the market as an NFT. Working on this scene together with the Toon Shader was lots of fun and it's an amazing tool that you can create very nice stylized textures. You can use them as I'm showing you in this video for either creating game assets or as well you can use them for creating NFTs and selling them on the market. Thank you for joining me in today's video, I hope you like it and that it was useful for you. Also if you're interested in what exactly workstation I'm using, I'm using an Intel Xeon based workstation for my work. If you would like to get more details, you can click either the pop-up on the top or as well check the description.